Welcome back to some more Pokemon Scarlet and Violet Wi-Fi battles. Today I have a set of three intense battles for you all with our Banette team against Charisivic Valley, Cody and Gazero, all from the Pokemon Battle Hub Discord. The first of these games has a test our strength against Charisivic Valley and his team featuring a powerful Charizard set. Can we overcome this challenge? Let's find out. So without further ado, let's jump into the game. Okay, my opponent Charisific Valley has brought a pretty cool team and they had to bring the Charizard because it is their mascot, of course, being the Charisific Valley. They do have a YouTube channel, so go check them out. There'll be a link in the description down below. They do Wi-Fi battles, stuff like that, theme teams, all that stuff. Really cool stuff, really awesome thumbnails, stuff like that. So go check them out. Um, I say then like it's more than one person. <laughs> anyway. Uh, let's go ahead and I, I, I kind of want to just lead off with like they're gonna lead off with Cleavor, right? They have to lead off with Cleavor. So I kind of want to lead off with Great Tusk, get my own Stealth Rocks up because that's that Charizard and Gyarados being and Dragonite being weak to Stealth Rocks and the Cleavor, of course. Um, but we could lead off with Milotic and go for a nice Surf straight away because Milotic does pretty well here. I think I'll lead off with Milotic. Let's lead on the offense because this is an offensive Milotic and then we'll just kind of go from there. And the battle begins. Good luck, have fun, Charisific Valley. So they lead off with Cleavor, as expected, as I lead off with my, uh, my Milotic. So I know I can take a Stone Axe, but I don't think they'll want to stay in to take a Surf. So I'm going to go straight for a Surf. I don't see any reason not to. They go for a U-turn, not wanting to stay in to risk the Stone Axe, not KOing. It would have nearly done the job, that's for sure, if that's the U-turn damage. I guess that's what you get for running an offensive Milotic. They can probably tell it's offensive Milotic as well based on that, but it's fine. Gyarados comes in. Great. That's actually really good for us. So the reason Gyarados coming in is great for us is because A, we're going to get an Intimidate competitive boost, which is going to make the Surf do even more damage. But also, we can Terra Electric. We might even need to Terra Electric. Oh, no, no. We do need to Terra Electric. That's, that's not enough Surf damage. Ice Beam, I'm not confident we'll KO from here. Um, I do kind of want a Terra Electric because I'll hurt that Corviknight as well. Um, so let's go for the Terra Electric Terra Blast. I'm pretty confident they won't Earthquake here. They more than likely go for a Dragon Dance, expecting either a Switch or something else. So we're going to Terrestrialize our Milotic into a nice and powerful Electric type and go for a Terra Blast because I don't see why not. So there's the Terra Electric. Boom. We're looking pretty good. Looking pretty good right now. Hopefully they go for a Dragon Dance. We probably outspeed, I think. Um, yeah, we do outspeed, I thought so, because Milotic's, I think it's either a little bit faster or it's a speed tie, one of the two. Because um, Milotic's like the counterpart to Gyarados. But Gyarados goes down in one clean hit to a plus two Terra Blast Electric. As you would expect, because Gyarados being four times weak and all that is... <laughs> Charizard comes in. Now, this thing is usually special, but I'm assuming it won't be if they've brought it in like this. Uh, let's go for a Surf. I'm pretty confident we can live a hit. They go for the Scorching Sands, though. That is going to KO us, unfortunately. I forgot about Scorching Sands. Uh, I will be honest, as Milotic does go down right there, but it took out the Gyarados big fry out of the way. Milotic did, um, and to be fair, if it was going to go down to a Scorching Sands there, there was nothing else it could really do for us against that team. So, um, right, looking at this uh, situation, I guess that we could probably go Bennett. I think Bennett's a good answer here. We can go for a Poltergeist. We've got the Focus Sash, so we can live any one hit, no problem. Um, unless they don't have an item, in which case, I don't know what I'm doing in this game. They do withdraw the Charizard, though. They don't want to get hit by a Poltergeist, which makes a lot of sense. They're probably going to go into the Overquilt. The Overquilt does come in. Nice and big. It is very big. Gets the Intimidate off. We get to see what item it's got with the Poltergeist, at least. Unless we miss, of course. Black Sludge. So we know they're probably not going to Terra this thing, which is good to know. As we do a little bit of damage, nothing too drastic. And then the Black Sludge is going to recover most of that back. So that's unfortunate, but it is what it is. Uh, Banette ain't going to do too much here. So let's go into our Great Tusk. Great Tusk seems like a perfect switch here. So we'll switch out our Banette into the Great Tusk, of course, like so. And um, we'll probably go for a Stealth Rocks. I think Stealth Rocks are going to be really helpful here. They go for a Toxic Spikes, though, right in the face of our Rapid Spinner, which is fantastic for us. And um, the Corviknight could defog, but if they set up Toxic Spikes, I don't think they're going to wander. And um, they don't have a Ghost type either, which is great. So we can Rapid Spin freely here. So let's go for a Stealth Rocks real quick. Stealth Rocks are up. And the fact that the Overquill didn't outspeed means it's not got speed investment because we have only a little bit of speed investment, a tiny weeny bit. They go for a Barb Barrage, though. That is going to do a no damage, but it does poison us, which is unfortunate. Um, very unfortunate, but it is at the same time, it's a pretty high chance for it to poison, I think. So not really too worried about that. So now what we can do is we can Rapid Spin away the Toxic Spikes if we want to. Get a nice speed boost. I think that's probably for the best. So let's go for a Rapid Spin right now. They do withdraw the Overquill, probably going into the Corviknight, if I had to guess. Uh, yeah, Corviknight, the Goliath Champion, comes in. So Corviknight is in. 
We go for... We get some stones damage, which is nice. We get a nice rapid spin chip as well. But they're probably going to be Rocky Helm, if I had to guess. So, uh, rapid spin comes through. It does no damage, of course. Bit of chip, that's it. And are we going to see Rocky Helmet? We do see Rocky Helmet, which is unfortunate, but it is what it is. So, um, now, if only we had Melotic around so we could switch it in and get a competitive boost from the Defog. That's the only thing that we can't really do now. So, now, what we can do... We can go Heatran and we can Lava Plume this thing. Or we can go Zoroark. Um, Zoroark's risky though because they could Body Press. I doubt they'd Body Press a Great Tusk. But it is a possibility, of course. But I think Zoroark hits a bit harder. No, I think Heatran's the better option here. We always go Heatran here, right? Because Lava Plume hurts everything on the team pretty much, except for the Charizard and the Dragonite. But the Dragonite don't want to get burned. So Heatran comes in, like so. They do go for the default, getting rid of them Stealth Rocks makes a lot of sense, that's fine. Absolutely fine by me. We've got Stealth Rocks on Heatran as well as a backup, so um, let's go for a Lava Plume right now. I don't see any reason not to against the Corviknight. They do withdraw the Corviknight as you would expect. And what are they going to go into here? They go into Dragonite the Galar Champion once again. Uh, not once again, we haven't seen Dragonite yet. We go for the Lava Plume though, that's going to do a, you know, breaks the multi-scale if they have it and it could potentially burn them, but they do have leftovers. Um, and they don't get burned. So they're going to get that multi-scale back the next turn. So now we have to switch out. So if they're going to Dragon Nance here, we should definitely go into our Great Tusk. Um, if they have Dual Wing Beat, then we definitely, you know, we can go for an... We, we can't take that, but at least we'll get two Rocky Helmet chips on them. So they withdraw Dragonite. They withdraw Dragonite. And they're going to go into Charizard this time. Expecting... The Great Tusk to come in, no doubt. That's a good switch. A very good switch. They either don't have Earthquake on Dragonite or they predicted the Great Tusk switch, which is a very good switch. Um, okay, so this is a bit of a particular peculiar moment for me because I don't actually know what to do here. Scorching Sands will two-shot my Heatran. To go for Air Slash, though, ugh, I can't really do anything. Great Tusk is going to have to go down here. We'll try and get Stealth Rocks up um, just to see if we can. They do go for a Flamethrower, which we might live. We don't live, of course, though, because it's a Charizard. And it's Flamethrower can melt mountains or something like that. I don't know. Uh, anyway, Burnett, you could come in here, but Zoroark's looking pretty good as well. Um, Zoroark will be disguised as the Ninetales. Let's go Zoroark. So we'll go into our Ninetales. But they're going to see there's no snow warning, so they know it's not the Ninetales, of course. But we can go for a nasty plot here, which is the good the good thing. So I'm going to go for a nasty plot um, right now. And luckily, um, Ninetales does actually learn nasty plots, so we can still get away with this. Um, they go for a flamethrower, though. If the Specs going to do a lot of damage. Oh, wow! It KOs Zoroark in one clean hit. That's definitely Specs. Definitely Specs. So Zoroark does go down right there. That is unfortunate. I underestimated the power of Charizard right there. I underestimated the power of Charizard right there, which is very unfortunate. Um, but now that we know it's Specs, we can get our Stealth Rocks up with a uh, Heatran. We're, we're all good. So um, Heatran comes in. Stealth Rocks go up. They can't bring Corviknight in. They have to switch out the Charizard here. They withdraw the Charizard because it's Specs. And they don't want it to go down to anything or just they don't want to give us a Flash Fire boost. They go into Dragonite. Now, Dragonite probably has got the um, Earthquake, if it's coming in like this. It probably has got the Earthquake. Or it wants the Dragon Dance on us. It's one of the two. Um, we definitely don't want to get hit by an Earthquake, that's for sure. So what we're going to have to go is we're going to have to go into our actual Ninetales. Um, Ninetales can probably handle this, right? Yeah, let's go into our actual Ninetales. So Ninetales comes through. Like so. Vimto comes through. There we go. There we go. So Ninetales comes through. That's great. Snow Warning is going to come through as well. Um, they do go for a Thunder Wave, interestingly enough. So it's more of a support uh, Dragonite, which is interesting. So um, if we assume... We're going to have to make some plays here. So we have to assume they're going to go for a either a Fire Spin here. They're a Thunder Wave set. They might have Fire Spin. Because I've seen that before. And um, we have to assume they're going to go Corviknight here, expecting an Aurora Veil. So they can defog away the Aurora Veil and the Stealth Rocks all in one go. So we're going to go Heatran. We're going to go straight onto Heatran. So we actually switched out first, even though we're paralyzed, which tells me they haven't switched out. So Hot Rod comes in, which is unfortunate. They do go for an Iron Head. So they have got Iron Head on that thing. That was interesting. So um, we could have gone for an Aurora Veil there, but I didn't want to risk the Corviknight coming in and just blowing away my Stealth Rocks and my uh, Aurora Veil just straight away. So now I'm going to go for a... I'm going to go for a Taunt. Um, they go for a Thunder Wave, which is fine. But me going for a Taunt here is probably my best option. 
probably my best option because this thing could sell roosts, dragon answers, you name it, it could do it. So we taunt the dragonite, which is fantastic. Um, and now we just go for a flash cannon here. Now that I think about it, I should have just freeze dried with the nine tails instead of going for the Aurora Veil to switch into Heatran. They actually go Cleavor here, which is an interesting switch because I'm going for a flash cannon right now. And after Stealth Rocks, if we don't get fully paralyzed, which we did unfortunately get fully paralyzed. That's unfortunate. Um, we go for another flash cannon here all the time though. Um, flash cannon would have definitely KO the Cleavor from there, but he's, he's fine. So they're actually going to Terrastalize. Are they going to go for a Terra Fighting close combat right now. Is that what we're going to see? Terra Water. Ooh, okay. Interesting. So the Terra Water Cleavor is going to come through, which is really interesting. And um, they go for a Stone Axe, which is going to sting a little bit, but not too much. Gets the Stealth Rocks up on our side of the field. So they're now less inclined to go for the Defog, which means the Charizard is going to be susceptible to the uh, Stealth Rocks. We go for a Flash Cannon. It does no damage, of course. And the Snow is going to stop. So now... What do we do? Do they go for another Stone Axe? Do they go for another Stone Axe? That's the real question. I think we need Heatran all around, right? For that um, Overquill. I think we're going to have to go Burnett. Burnett's probably the best option here. I think we go Burnett. I, I think Burnett can take a single Stone Axe. But um, I could be wrong. I could be wrong. So Puppetmon's going to come through right now. There we go. We do break our Focus Sash with the Stealth Rocks, which is fine. They go for a Stone Axe. We should live one. We do live one, which is great. Uh, and now we go for a Shadow Sneak and try and get the KO on this Cleavor. If, we, if they switch into the Overquill, it's fine. Um, it's not the end of the world, but if they don't, they don't. They are withdrawing the Cleavor. Cleavor is their wing con at this point because the Ninetales is obviously paralyzed. Gets out spared. So the Overquill comes in. Pointed Stones do dig in and we get a nice uh, Shadow Sneak off after an Intimidate. So... Not the end of the world. We've got a little bit of chip. Just a tiny, weeny bit of chip. Literally 1 HP, probably. Um, which is going to be recovered by the Black Sludge anyway. So it's not the end of the world for them. Um, so what we can do here is we can go Heatran. That's probably our best option. So we're going to have to go Heatran. Uh, Bennett can take one more Stealth Rocks. Like one more and that's it. Based on the health it's at. So we should be alright to go into Heatran here. Get some Stealth Rock chip. That's fine. They go for a Spikes. Ah, now we can't. Now we can't. That sealed the fate on Burnett. Sealed Burnett's fate right there. Which is unfortunate, but it is what it is at the end of the day. Now, looking at this uh, matchup, Heatran doesn't do too bad. But that Charizard, if it's Scorching Sands, definitely gets the one up on us. So let's go for a Lava Plume. They withdraw the Overquill. Are they going to go Charizard? Charizard makes the most sense. Yeah, Charizard comes in. Which is fine. Going to get some Stealth Rock Chip. There we go. And we couldn't move because we got fully paralyzed again. That is just so unfortunate. What is going on in this game? What is going on in this game? <laughs> if we'd have got the flash, if we weren't fully paralyzed against the cleavor, we would have flash cannon it to death. And in this instance, we would have done a little bit of chip, but not. So it's not. It's not really the end of the world with the with this. But um, what do I do? What do I do? What do I do? What do I do? If we assume they're going for a scorching sands, we should just sack off Burnett and go into nine tails because we know the choice uh, choice specs. So, we go Burnett. We'll see what they go for. There we go. Burnett goes down, unfortunately. Burnett is RIP to Burnett. RIP to Burnett. And they go for a Scorching Sands. So, we definitely go Ninetales now. So, Ninetales comes in. It's going to get some Stealth Rock and Spikes chip, which is unfortunate. But it is what it is at the end of the day. So, Stealth Rocks are going to come through. Spikes are going to come through. And uh, we do get the Snow Warning up, which is nice. But, um, unfortunately... This just invites in the Corviknight. So, would they stay in here? Let's go for a freeze dry and see if they stay in. They do stay in and go for a Scorching Sands. It should do a lot of damage. It won't KO us, though, because we're a Ninetales. And we get fully paralyzed? No, we don't get fully paralyzed. That's nice. That's nice. So, freeze dry comes through. It doesn't KO the Charizard, but um, it comes close, which is nice. So, let's go for a freeze dry again. I'm pretty sure they finished the game with Charizard here, which is very fitting for their channel. So this is going to make a great battle from his perspective, but not so much on my perspective. It's a good battle, don't get me wrong, I, I enjoyed this. Seeing Charizard dominate like this is awesome. Absolutely awesome. So uh, we'll go Heatran now. Heatran does unfortunately go down to a Scorching Sands after Stealth Rocks and Spikes. I think it goes down before that. We are special defensive, but we definitely don't take it. So let's go for a Flash Cannon. They could have they could have missed the Scorching Sands, I guess, but um, no. Scorching Sands takes out the Heatran, and that is going to be the game. So GG Charisific Valley, that was a fun one. I did enjoy that. Very fun game. GG.
All right, Cody's brought a pretty powerful team with the Lilligant, the Meowth and Teleon's always cool to see, Iron Tread, Sliverwing, and a Primarina. Pretty awesome stuff. Um, we did say fun OU mix, so this is a great team to go against, um, to be honest with you. So I'm, le I'm leaning towards just leaning off with Banette and just getting some damage off on something. But if they lead with the Iron Treads to get that booster energy, the Poltergeist is going to be useless. Useless. So that's um, a downside to that. So I guess it could still do it. Because it does a lot of damage to the entire team except for Meowskarada, but they probably lead with Meowskarada, right? So we could go with the Ninetales lead. Ninetales leads pretty well here. I think Ninetales is a good lead. We can get the Aurora Bell up straight away. They don't have a Defogger. And uh, they have a Rapid Spinner and Iron Tread, so we've got to be careful about that with the Great Tusks and the Heat Round Stealth Rock. So let's just go with that. And the battle begins. Good luck, have fun, Cody. So they're going to lead off with Primarina. Nice and shiny as we lead off with our Alola Ninetales. Also nice and shiny, of course. Um, now, I do want to get the Aurora Veil up straight away here. I don't see any reason not to. They don't have a uh, Court Change Mon. They don't have a Defog Mon. They don't have a Brick Break Mon. Uh, well, they might not have a Brick Break Mon. Sliverwing could have Brick Break, I guess. So, um, we can go for the Aurora Veil now just uh, fine. And that's going to be up for the rest of the game for eight turns anyway. Um, let's see what this Primarina wants to do. It's probably Flips turns, right? Moonblast straight up. That's going to do about, uh, yeah, I was about to say about a third. Um, so now, we can switch out. We could go Heatran or Milotic. I think Milotic's a decent one, but Heatran can't really do anything in return. Um, so we might be better off going for a Freeze Dry. I think I will just go straight for a Freeze Dry here, because it hurts everything on the team, pretty much. Except from the Iron Treads, to an extent. That does no damage, telling me they are an Aurora Veil. Uh, uh, not Aurora Veil. They are a um, Assault Vest set. So, now that they've gone for a Hyper Voice, we could Encore them into that. Let's Encore them into the Hyper Voice, and then we'll go Milotic. We've drawn the Primarina. They don't want to get Encored. That's fair enough. They don't want to get Freeze Dried or Freezed in general. Iron Treads comes in. That's a good switch. It's definitely uh, able to take on my uh, Ninetales, no problem. They aren't Booster Energy, which is good to know. That means we don't have to worry about the uh, Booster Energy uh, on that. But we do have to worry about it on the Sliver Wing. So, um, right. Now, what do we do? Um, probably Great Tusk, right? Yeah, it's good Great Tusk straight away. So we withdraw, of course. We're going to go into Great Tusk. Now, the best thing they can switch into Great Tusk here is going to be either the Lilligan or the Meowskarada. So we have to be um, wary of that. So they do withdraw the Iron Trace. They predict the switch. And they're going to go into Lilligan and Teleon. And Teleon's a good switch there. Good switch. Nice and shiny as well. I'm very tall. Very tall. It's very big. Um, so now what do we do? Uh, probably Milotic, right? Let's go Milotic real quick. So we'll switch out into Milotic. Like so. Noel comes in. The Milotic. Nice and shiny. Gotta love it. They go for a snipe shot, which is gonna do a bit of damage, because it was a crit, right? Yeah, it was a crit. Damn. Damn crit. So the snow is gonna stop, but the Aurora Bell stays strong. Um, let's go for a Terra Electric Terra Blast. I don't see any reason not to. Yeah, let's go for it. Let's just go for it. Let's just go for it. So they withdraw the Inteleon. Are they gonna go Pre-Marina, or are they gonna go with the Lilligan or the Meowskarada? Sliverwing the Great comes in. Nice and shiny. Gotta love it. So we're going to Terrastalize into an Electric type. And I think Electric benefits us a little bit because it, it makes it so we can take a hit from that Meowskarada and the Lilligan if we need to and go for an Ice Beam. And the Lilligan more so because it's not going to be able to do too much towards in return while the Aurora Veils up anyway. Um, so we go for a Terra Blast with Terra Electric and that should still do a good chunky damage to the Sliverwing. It won't KO, but it'll do a good amount of damage. That's an Assault Vest Slivewing if I've ever seen one. That is an Assault Vest Slivewing if I've ever seen one. Let's go for a Flip Turn. We should outspeed here. We do outspeed. We go for a Flip Turn. That Flip Turn does about the same as the Terror Blast. So that is an Assault Vest Slivewing if I've ever seen one. Um, so let's go ahead and switch out. We'll probably expect a close combat here. So let's go into our uh, Bennett. Bennett should be able to take hit no problem. They do go for a high horsepower, which is going to do a little bit of damage. Nothing too bad. And we do curse body that thing, so that's not too bad either. Um, now we can just go for a Poltergeist. I don't see any reason not to go for a Poltergeist here. Did we draw the Sliverwing? Probably going into Meowskarada to take a, uh, said Poltergeist. Uh, yeah, Meowskarada has to come in being a Dark type, but it's not going to take it too well. Not too well, anyway. Poltergeist comes through. We don't miss, right? We don't miss. They are heavy G boots, which is good to know. And that does about half, which is great. So that's, that's some good damage. The Aurora Veil does wear off, unfortunately, but it's fine. We can get the uh, Ninetales in at some point, I'm sure. Um, do we need you for anything else, Bennett? Do we need Bennett for anything else? That is the real question. What is the best switch in here 
we assume they're going to go for a knockoff, we should go Great Tusk, but they could switch our moves and go for a Flower Trick. Flower Trick should take out the Bonnet anyway. Um, let's just stay in... Um, let's just stay in and go for another Poltergeist just in case they don't. They are actually a special Meowth Dorado, which is going to KO Bonnet. Um, very good to know they're special, so we can bring Heatran in pretty safely here. Pretty safely here. Get the Stealth Frogs up, which would be nice. So Hot Rod comes in. The best switching is going to be Inteleon or the Pre-Marina, one of the two. So let's get the Stealth Frogs up whilst we can. We draw the Masquerade, of course, as you would expect. Not the best Pokemon to be in against a Heatran, especially when it's special. Inteleon's the one to come in, which is good to know. We do get the Stealth Frogs up, which is great. That's going to hurt the Sliverwing a little bit. It's going to hurt um, the Pre-Marina. It's going to hurt the Lilligan if it's Focus Sashed. Um, so that's great. Um, so now we have to switch out. So we're going to go into... Uh, the Aurora Veil's not up, so that means... Snipe Shot's going to two-shot my Milotic. Uh, she's going to stay in and go for a Lava Plume because I know I can take a Snipe Shot unless it's a crit, which it is. Because it's a Snipe... <laughs> of course it's a crit. Of course the Snipe Shot gets a crit. That's the, the whole point of the thing. Okay, so now we get a free switch into Milotic who hopefully doesn't get critted here either. Um, but I have a feeling we're going to get critted all the way by this Inteleon. I have a feeling we're going to get critted all the way by this Inteleon. Um, just a hunch. So let's go for a Terra Blast once again. They go for an Ice Beam, which is interesting. That's going to do a no damage. Oh, are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? The Freeze? And we get Frozen Solid first turn as well. Couldn't even un on the first... Oh, that is just unfortunate. Let's go for a Terra Blast once again. They withdraw the Inteleon, probably going into the Iron Treads. To Rapid Spin. Yeah, Iron Treads comes in to Rapid Spin. Get rid of them Stealth Rocks, maybe. That's really unfortunate that that happened to us, but it is what it is. We get Frozen Solid, of course. We don't even fall out. Um, let's go for a Surf, just in case they do go for a Rapid Spin. We are Frozen Solid, and we did outspeed there as well, which is really unfortunate. And they go for a Rapid Spin, which is going to get rid of the Stealth Rocks. And now we're set up to get KO'd, so that is unfortunate. Uh, right there that that happened. So they are a bulky iron treads by the looks of it. So let's go for another surf. They do go for an earthquake. Of course, it's going to take out my Lotic. We got uh, freeze hacked. We got crit hacked. Everything that could go wrong goes wrong this game. But you know what? We're going to be all right. We're going to power through this. We're going to power through this. So what can we do in this situation? Iron treads is probably our best option with the earthquake slash ice spinner. I think iron, I think great, no iron treads, I great tusk is the best option. So let's go great tusk. And um, we'll just go for a, uh, we'll just go for an earthquake. I don't see any reason not to go for an earthquake here. They do go for an iron tread switch, um, because they can go into the Lilligan or the Masquerada, but they're, they're going to still take a bit of damage from the uh, earthquake. So Lilligan comes in, nice and shiny. We go for an EQ. It's going to break Sash, which is great. No damage, of course, but breaks the Sash nonetheless. They aren't even Sash, the leftovers, which is good to know. Very good to know. They probably go for a Quiver here. So let's go for a Ice Spinner, I guess. Ice Spinner comes through. We do outspeed, of course. And that's going to do a decent bit of damage to the Lilligan. Nothing too drastic as they go for a Quiver Dance. So there we go. So that's GG right there because Lilligan cannot be stopped right now. It is too powerful. Um, Definitely too powerful. It's got Giga Drain as well. It's going to get right back up to full HP from the Great Tusk. So I think I'm not going to give up yet. I'm not going to give up yet because this could still change. This could still change. No, no, it can't really, can it? Can't really, can it? But let's let's not give up anyway. Let's give Cody the courtesy of actually like doing the job. So they're gonna Terra, probably into Terra Fire, if I had to guess. Terra Fire, yeah. So Terra Fire comes through. We should have gone for an EQ there, but how was I meant to know they were gonna Terra Fire? I thought they'd just go for the, go go straight for the Jugulus and just KO me. They go for the Giga Drain there. That's gonna KO us, and it's gonna give them pretty much all the HP back, which is really unfortunate. Um, Terra Fire is the nail in the coffin though, because it means Nine Tails cannot do anything. Not that it could anyway. And it also means Zoroark cannot touch this thing. So let's go Zoroark now. Vimto comes in. Boom. Ninetales is in. And um, we're not really Ninetales, obviously. So we go for a Night Days. Night Days comes through. We actually still out speed, which is interesting. We could we could load the accuracy here. We don't. They go for a Terra Blast. And that's going to KO Zoroark, right? Yeah. Oh, we lived on 1 HP. 1 HP. That's not too bad. I like those odds. So, if we can get a crit Night Days here, we can actually pull this off. So, let's go for a Night Days now. Night Days comes through. We could get an accuracy drop as well, but I, I doubt it. 
Um, as no accuracy drops, we go down to Life Orb, and then they just go for, what, a Giga Drain or something? Quiver Dance again. Good play. Good play. Nailing the coffin right there. Nailing the coffin with the Lilligans. You love to see it. Wow. Wow. Ninetales comes through. Ninetales comes through. So, let's see what we can do here. So, we get the Snow Warning off. Which doesn't mean anything when they've got Terra Blast Fire. So let's go for a, uh, let's go for a Moon Blast, I guess. They go for a Giga Drain there. That's going to take us out, get some health back for them. And that is going to be the game. So GG Cody, that was a fun one. Um, even though we got hacks, you know, it's still always a fun game. So um, either way, GG. GG. All right, on to the next one, I guess. Okay, Gazero has brought a pretty cool team with the Quagsire, the Iron Treads, Typhlosion, Indeedee, Mail, Garchomp, and a Mighty Enna. Pretty cool stuff. So I kind of want to lead Ninetales to get the screens up, but they probably lead off with the Typhlosion. If they do, though, we can just go straight into Heatran. They may pull out the Scorching Sounds, but it should be fine. Um, let's see what we can do here. I think maybe I think maybe Ninetales is the best lead here. It does super well against their entire team, except from the Indeedee and the Iron Treads to an extent and the Typhlosion. So, uh, we could leave with that. I think I will leave with that. And the Ninetales can come in first. And then we'll just kind of go from there. And the battle begins. Good luck, have fun, Gazero. So, they're going to lead off with Indeedee. Which is a great lead to get the Psychic Terrain up. We lead off with Ninetales, though. We're going to get that Aurora Veil up straight away. They can't go for a Defog because they'll get rid of their Psychic Terrain. Um, and to be fair, the only thing that benefits from the Psychic Terrain is the Indeedee. So, we're not too worried about that. Um, now, if it is Choice Scarf, it could do a number to us. Um, however, I, I'm firmly believing that it's not Choice Scarfed, and also I'm believing that we can live an expanding force if it is Choice Scarfed, so I'm going to go for a Aurora Veil right now. Um, there we go, it is not Choice Scarfed, which is good to know. Probably Terrain Extender or something like that, right? Um, so we get the Aurora Veil up, which is great. They go for an Encore, which is fine. It forces a switch, which means they have to guess what we're going to switch into. Now, um, what do we switch into? I, I, I want to go into Heatran or Zoroark. I think Zoroark's a good one. Because at least Zoroark can handle itself against the likes of the Garchomp, for example. So let's go Zoroark now. Disguise is the Great Tusk. So Vimto, you switch on out there. If they do go for an Expanding Force, they might see the Great Tusk and think, Yay, what a great switch. Um, but unfortunately for them, it is the Zoroark in Disguise. As they do go for an Expanding Force for it to fail, which is absolutely amazing. So now, looking at their squad, I'd say their best switching is probably going to be the Mighty Enna. So we could Nasty Plot up here. And um, that could be good. Or we can Night Days. I think I'm just going to go straight for the Night Days for the damage. Um, Night Days comes through. And that's going to cleanly take out the Indeedee, which is fantastic. They didn't really have a good switch into Zoroark, um, which is amazing. So that is great for us. In comes Dialgildgidiz. <laughs> the shiny Mighty Enna. Nice and shiny. You got to love it. So um, I don't want to stay in here because we can't really do much to it. But it can't really do much to us either. It, it's probably got Psychic Fangs, actually, that'll break the screens. That's a good point, but it won't affect my Zoroark, so I'm actually better off staying in here, right? So, am I better off going for Sludge Bomb or Flamethrower? Looking at the team, I'd say Sludge Bomb just, just in case we get the Typhlosion switch on the Flamethrower. So, I'm going to go for a Sludge Bomb here and just get damage off. And also because, like I said, they can't Psychic Fangs us. They can't get rid of the screens of Psychic Fangs, which is great. They actually go for an Assurance, which is going to do a lot of damage. Not really. Um, but it does break our illusion, so they finally reveal the Zoroark in its place. Um, assurance is an interesting move, especially considering we've got Life Orb. Um, so let's go for another Sludge Bomb. I don't see any reason not to. As that's going to take out the Mighty Enna in one clean hit, which is fantastic. So Zoroark takes down the Mighty Enna, which is fantastic. And that is one dead doggo. That Assurance would have done a lot more damage if it weren't for the Aurora Veil as well. That's like, that was crazy damage. Because of the Life Orb, isn't it? The Life Orb um, makes Assurance do more damage, which is really, really good play to be fair. Um, so right, Quagsire is in. I don't want to stay in here. Um, I do want to go Ninetales, to be honest with you. Uh, Ninetales is the good switch here. They probably get the Stealth Rocks up or they go straight for the EQ. One of the two. At least we get the Snow up, we get the Defense Boost and the Aurora Veil as well. So we'll definitely be able to take the Earthquake like it's nothing. So um, in comes Ninetales now. This does bait in the Typhlosion big time. So Snow Warning is going to come through. They go for an Amnesia. Ooh, interesting tech. So Amnesia comes through. Um, we can just Encore this though. Let's just Encore into Amnesia. They are going to Terrastalize. Interesting. So what are they going to tear it into? That's the real question. Something that resists uh, ice dry, freeze dry. No, ground. Okay, so ground is coming through. So it'd be only one times weak to freeze dry. So it would take it a lot better. So that's fair enough. We go for an Encore. We're going to Encore them into Amnesia. Now, however, um, depending on the set that this thing is, if it's unaware... We can't sell on it, but if it isn't unaware, we can with Bennett. 
So let's go into Bennett. Let's go into Bennett and we'll, we'll set up a sword and we'll see how much damage it does. So we've we'll drawn Nine Tails now. And we're going to good old Bennett. Good old Puppet Mon over here. There we go. They do withdraw the Quagsire. They, they realize they're on court into it. That's a good play switching out right there. And they're going to go into Typhlosion. Now Typhlosion's an interesting one because it will do a number to us. Now the Aurora Veil has gone. The weirdness has also disappeared, so we can Shadow Sneak this thing. But we have got the Focus Sash, so there's no real need to go for a, a Shadow Sneak when we can just Poltergeist, right? So they go for a Flame Charge. Interesting. So a physical Typhlosion set or just a Speed Boosting set with Eruption, maybe. We go for a Poltergeist, and they have a Power Herb. What set is this Typhlosion going for right now? Well, nothing, because we're going to go for a Shadow Sneak this next turn and KO this Typhlosion. So Shadow Sneak comes through. That's going to KO the Typhlosion, no problem. I'm really curious as to what that Power Herb was for, though. Was it for Solar Beam? Probably, right? The snow is going to stop, of course. And now we've just got Binet on the field looking awesome. Garchomp comes in, the former Alpha. Nice. Very big, very big. Um, do we... I think we can live a hit, so we go for a Poltergeist here all the time, right? Metal Claw. Okay. Try. Oh, he gets the attack boost as well. That's interesting. So we go for a Poltergeist. Um, they have got an Adrenaline Orb, which is interesting. Does that activate on a Ghost Time move? I don't know if it does, does it? I don't think it does. They got an attack boost, though, so we're going to have to go for a Shadow Sneak here because we cannot live another move. If you go for an EQ, it's going to definitely KO. So Shadow Sneak comes through. Does a lot to the Garchomp. We get Rough Skin, which is unfortunate. And uh, they go for a Dragon Rush, which is definitely going to KO Burnett. So Burnett goes down, which is unfortunate, but it is what it is. So Burnett goes down. And now we have to switch out um, into Ninetales, I think. I think Ninetales is the best option. Outspeeds, right? Yeah, Ninetales outspeeds. So we go with Ninetales. Vimto comes in. Gets the snow up. We can get the Aurora Veil if we want to, but there's no point, really. We may as well just go straight for the Freeze Dry and get the KO on this Garchomp, right? So let's go for the Freeze Dry real quick. Freeze Dry comes through. Boom. Down goes the Garchomp, which is fantastic. And now we've got the Quagsire left, which goes down to a single Freeze Dry, I believe. And we've got an Iron Treads. That's the problem. Iron Treads is the problem. Iron Treads comes in. So this thing does a number to us at the moment. It's booster energy, probably in speed, I guess, or attack. One of the two. Attack. So that's great. So attack is great. And um, we're going to go for an Aurora Veil here just to make sure that we can take a hit from this thing. Maybe not Ninetales taking an Iron Head at plus, uh, plus 1.2 attack. But... Uh, yeah, Iron Head comes through. That's going to nearly KO us. We do live, which means we get to go for another attack. So we're going to go for a Freeze Dry real quick. Uh, Freeze Dry comes through. That's going to do a little bit of damage to the Iron Treads. Nothing too drastic as they go for another Iron Head, which takes out Nine Tails, which is great for them. Great for them. So now, I think our best bet is going to be either Zoroark or Milotic here. Milotic does pretty well, depending on the set on that um, Quagsire, of course. Uh, Great Tusk obviously wars this thing to a no end. I think we go Great Tusk here. I think we always go Great Tusk here. So this this Quagsire is going to be the problem. That's the pro that's the real issue. The Quagsire is going to be a problem. So um, now that I shouldn't have let Nine Tails go down. Really, I should have kept it around for the, for the Quagsire. So let's go for an EQ here. And um, they do go for an Iron Head, which is going to give them some Rocky Helmet Chip, which is unfortunate for them, but it is it is what it is. We do flinch, but the Rocky Helmet chip is there, so that's that's fine. We don't mind that too much. They go for an EQ now, not wanting to get Rocky Helmeted. Does no damage thanks to the Aurora Veil, and we go for an EQ, which is going to take out the Iron Tread. So we just shattered the ground, both going for an EQ right there. And now we've got Quagsire to deal with. Now Quagsire, if it is an Aurora, if it is going to go for its Amnesia shenanigans and maybe even Curse, we could be in for a bad time here. So Quagsire comes in Terra Grounded. Now, if this thing is... Let's go into Milotic straight away. I'm hoping this thing's not Water Absorb and it is unaware. Really hoping it's unaware. Really hoping it's unaware because Milotic can now do some decent damage with Surf. So they go for an Aqua Tail, which is going to do no damage because of the Aurora Veil. And it being resisted. So let's go for a Surf, hoping this thing is, um, is unaware. That's good to know. And that nearly KOs the Quagsire as they go for a Toxic. They did not expect us to go for a Surf. They're w worrying about the Water Absorb. That's great. So Milotic comes in and we're going to get some decent damage off on this thing. So that's great. So Milotic can come through now. Go for another Surf. Take out this Quagsire and that is going to be the game. So GG Gazira, that was a fun one. 
Interesting sets. The Metal Claw on the Garchomp was definitely something. We got the attack boost and everything like that. The Power Herb. I want to know what that Power Herb was for. Was it Solar Beam or what? I don't know. Let, 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 let's find out. Let me know in the comment section down below, Gazero. That's the lot. Two losses and a W. I'll take that. Thank you for watching today's video. Be sure to try the team out using the code on screen now. And with that being said, I'll catch you all in a bit.